In today's video, we're going to be talking about Pemphigus vulgaris. This is a blistering disease of the skin and mucous membranes, and it usually affects patients in their 70s. Pemphigus vulgaris is considered to be an autoimmune blistering disease, and it's noted that there are IgG autoantibodies directed against desmoglenes 3 and 1. Now, desmoglenes are desmosomal proteins, and they are in the cadherin family. Now, these proteins help keratinocytes in the epidermis attach to each other. When these proteins are targeted, the intraepidermal blisters form just above the basal layer. To simplify that, these desmoglenes help keratinocytes stick together, and when they are targeted by these autoantibodies, the keratinocytes can't stick together, so we have a blister formation instead of the tight skin. The symptoms of Pemphigus vulgaris are ongoing, painful, superficial blisters, or they can present as erosions of the skin and mucosa. And in some patients, it may only affect the mucosa, so the presentation is often just in the oral cavity. If we look closely at the blisters that form in the epidermis, they're flaccid, they can rupture really easily, and because they can rupture easily, some patients just show up and they have these crusted lesions or erosions where the blisters used to be. Generally, these blisters and erosions are quite painful. In the mouth, the blisters can show up in the oral cavity, but it can also present in the pharynx, the larynx, the esophagus, conjunctiva, and at the genitals. Skin rashes tend to be on the head, trunk, and intertrigenous zones. If the disease is ongoing for a while, a patient may present with a positive Nikolsky sign. A positive Nikolsky sign means the top layer of the skin can slip away from the lower layer when it's rubbed, and this leaves a moist base. To help diagnose Pemphigus vulgaris, a biopsy should be taken to help identify it, but this positive Nikolsky sign is a key indicator. A biopsy for direct immunofluorescence of normal skin next to the blister or erosion area will show intracellular IgG and C3. If we use indirect immunofluorescence of the blood, this will show intercellular IgG deposition on stratified squamous epithelium. To manage Pemphigus vulgaris, it's a good idea to cover the areas which are eroded with white petrolatum and non-stick dressings. It's important to note that if this disease is left untreated, it can be fatal. It's best to refer the patient to a burn unit, especially if this disease is widespread. The first drug of choice is going to be systemic corticosteroids, often via IV. Other treatments include azathioprine, mycophenolate morphotil, methotrexate, plasmapheresis, and rituximab.